This is the Halo 65 keyboard, Newfie's first high profile keyboard, or as most would call it, just a standard mechanical keyboard with normal MX switches. You buy these direct from the Newfie website, which I'll link in the description below. It's available in matte black and ionic white colorways, with the option of Gatoron Pro 2 switches in red, brown, and blue, and Gatoron Baby Kangaroos. It retails at $119.95 with the Gatoron Pro switches and $129.95. 95 cents with the kangaroos. Let's just run through some of the basic specifications. It's an ANSI 65% layout. It has a north facing RGB PCB, so no cherry keycaps. It's got double shot COP PBT keycaps. It's got tri mode connect wired at 2.4 gigahertz wireless and Bluetooth allowing connection to up to four devices. It's fully backlit and what they call side lit, which is the small light on the top left hand corner of the keyboard, but it's also halo lit, which is the lighting between the top and the bottom case. The Halo 65 is a nice keyboard to unbox. On top, you'll find the quick start guide and a poster, a set of stickers, the keyboard with a dust cover in a bag, and the 2.4 gigahertz receiver in its storage slot in the keyboard. Then the good bit about unboxing is finding the clear box of accessories and extras. You get a lot of extras with this keyboard. A USB-C to USB-A cable that's 1.5 meters long. You get a keycap and switch puller. You get 17 extra keycaps to adjust for the colorway that you want and you get seven extra switches to play with. One of the first things I noticed when lifting the keyboard out of the box was its weight. It's heavy because the case is kind of a composite arrangement. The bottom of the case is ABS plastic but the top case or frame is aluminium. We'll look at that in more detail later. So let's take a closer look. The Newfie Halo 60 is a neat looking keyboard with a nice colorway. The turquoise, red and yellows really pop off the black case and accent the white alpha keycaps. The keyboard has a neat little storage slot for the 2.4 GHz dongle with a USB port framed in the same turquoise as the switch and dongle. On the underside of the keyboard, you'll find the four turquoise rubber pads and two sets of red feet which add some nice colour. The typing angles are 5.5 degrees with the feet up, 8.5 degrees with the small feet down and 11 degrees with the large feet down. There is also a nice silver pipe with the keyboard details and the new file logo is etched into the plastic. The keyboard is extremely well lit. It's backlit, side lit and halo lit. The backlight has 10 modes. The side light, which is this small strip light at the top left has four modes and the halo light also has four modes. You can brighten or dim them all as well as change the speed of the effect. So now we come on to disassembly. I like to disassemble as many of the pre-built and bare bones keyboards as I can to show you what it involves. Disassembly of the Halo 65 brought some bad news and good. First we'll look at the bad news, which is essentially that this keyboard case is clipped together which introduces the risk of breaking clips while taking it apart. The keyboard is essentially a tray mount design, there are screws down through the plate which screw into the bottom case, however the ABS bottom case and the aluminium top frame are clipped together, so it doesn't just come apart once the screws are out, you also have to pry it apart where the two sections meet, which is never nice. I broke two clips doing this and I couldn't see a way of avoiding this after it was apart as there is no way that I could see that the clip could be disengaged with a plastic lever or guitar pick from the outside. The clips are on the aluminium frame side, there is a plastic subframe inside the aluminium frame which allows for the halo light and side light to shine through. There are two clips on the top edge, just out from the centre on either side, and another two clips, one on each end. The two clips on the top edge are the ones I broke and I had to glue back on. You'll also see here that the plate is screwed into the aluminium frame which gives the keyboard a feel somewhere in between an aluminium tray mount like the KBD fans aluminium toe fuse and an ABS plastic case. I really like both aluminium and ABS tray mount keyboards but the aluminium cases give a hard bottom out which puts more emphasis on the switches in my opinion. In an aluminium case or something that feels like an aluminium case as this one does it's important that you have good switches with a good lube job and switch films when necessary. In the bottom case, the power switch and the USB-C port are on a separate small PCB, so you don't need to think about this while taking out the main PCB. The 2.4 GHz receiver storage slot is also integrated into the bottom case, so it doesn't create any issues during disassembly. 
The battery sits neatly into the silicone dampening pad as you can see here. So now it's completely apart, I can move on to the good news. As a general rule, I don't take apart keyboards that are clipped together unless I have to and can find some good guidance on how this is done without damaging the keyboard. I don't disassemble my iQnixes or my Melgeek keyboards as the risk just isn't worth the reward. With all the dampening that those keyboards come with, it would be disassembly for the tape or tempest mod only in my case, so not really worth it. And the same goes for this keyboard. Board. There is a silicone dampening pad in the bottom of the case between the plate and the PCB and there is even a silicone dampening sheet on the PCB itself dampening between the switches and the plate just like the PE foam mod. With all of this dampening I can't see the point in opening it up unless you wanted to remove some of the dampening for some reason. For me all the mods this keyboard needs can be done from the top as it's hot swapping with plate mount stabilizers. So that brings me on to my plan in terms of the mods. As I said before the half aluminium feel to this keyboard means that the stock gator on G Pro Browns don't quite cut it for me. You could just lube them and get an improvement there, but I think I'm going to swap them out for switches more to my taste or something new that I've not tried before. The stabilizers also need some work, but they appear to be the same stabs that came in my Gamma K LK67 going off the color. They're these turquoise um, stabilizers, and the stabilizers in that keyboard were among the best plate mount stabilizers I've come across to date. So, what I'll do is I'll clean them, holy mod them, lube them, and then see if anything else is needed to stop them from ticking and rattling long term. So at that point I think it's best to do a stock typing test to see how the typing feel and experience and sound is out of the box. The Halo 65 seems to be a pretty decent stock, slap it on the desk and use it type of keyboard. It has some unique features and accessories like the box load of keycaps and switches and the Halo lighting, and it hits the mark on some of the must-haves like a hot swap PCB and tri-mode connect. It's a fine looking keyboard and really is quite unique. It has a nice colorway with some really nice accent colors which gives it a fun but still minimalistic look. I never like seeing north facing PCB as it rules out cherry profile switches, but that may not be important if you don't intend to change them out. I also don't like it particularly when I don't feel like I can take a keyboard apart without running the risk of damage it. Nufi mitigates this issue somewhat by making it so as you really don't need to take it apart, but I just don't see why we need to clip keyboards together when screwing them together makes it much easier to take them apart and gives you the option of playing with some DIY mounting mods. It's hard to find a keyboard in my collection to draw a direct comparison to, but it sits up there with the very good budget or entry level pre-builds. The Melgeek and iQnix keyboards sit on the shelf above that in the high quality pre-builds, but this is to be expected given they generally cost more. It's definitely better than the LK67, which would come out at the same cost after doing a modest build out. I'm looking forward to modding it. The stock typing test is probably a seven out of 10 compared to the nine out of 10 Melgeeks and iQnixes. There is some space bar rattle and I'm not too keen on the Gatoron G Pro Browns in this keyboard, whereas I like them in the Keychron V4. I think with some new and lube switches and the stab mods, which is not a lot of work, this will be an absolute banger. A very good first bash at a normal profile keyboard from Nufi.